Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Australian Tapestry Workshop second lecture as part of our international speaker series, Cloth Culture. It's an online series of lectures featuring five contemporary artists who utilize textiles to communicate complex narratives around their cultural heritage. My name is Caroline Johnston, and I'm the convener of the Friends of the Australian Tapestry Workshop. Before we begin tonight, I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge the Bunwurrung and Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation, who are the traditional custodians of the land from which I'm zooming in this evening. I'd also like to pay respect to their elders, past, present and future, and extend that respect to other Indigenous Australians present. Today we'll be speaking with artist Troy Anthony Bayliss. He uh, is from the Jawan in South Australia is a self-described queer, Aborig queer Aboriginal and a descendant of the Jawan people from the Northern Territory and is also of Irish ancestry. Bayless has an incredibly diverse practice that involves both art making and curating along with lecturing, research and community. As the inaugural Guildhouse Fellow, Troy explored the legacies of colonialism, migration, and historical amnesia by literally weaving together place names. And for those that don't know, the Guildhouse is South Australia's leading organization for visual arts, craftspeople, and designers. Troy is formerly course coordinator of Aboriginal Cultures, Comparative Indigenous Studies, and Indigenous Philosophy at the University of South Australia, Adelaide. Currently in its final stages of completion, his PhD, Deadly Mimicry, Ind Indigeneity, and drag in contemporary artistic representation is concerned with analysis, cultural interpretation and ethics of the self as subject. His group exhibitions in, since 2019 include the National 2019 New Australian Art at Carriage Works, Sydney, Fresh Material New Australian Textile Art at Perk Tucker Regional Gallery, Townsville, and Jamming with Strangers at Kazula Powerhouse, Sydney, and solo exhibitions, nomenclatures at Art Gallery of South Australia, Yes, I Am Musical at Hugo Michel Gallery, Adelaide, and nomenclature Handoff at Handoff Academy, South Australia, which is currently on display. Now, if you'd like to ask questions during the talk, please send them through by clicking the Q&A button. Also, it'd be wonderful if you could post in the chat where you are from in the world so we can see everyone who's joining us and where you are from. We will try and answer as many of your questions at the end of the lecture as, as much as we can. And I'd now like to welcome Troy to speak. Troy, thank you so much for joining us tonight and welcome to our international speaker series. Over to you. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much, Carolyn. It's a, it's a, it's a pleasure and, um, and welcome everybody. I, I've got this feeling somebody's watching me, that's for sure. So, um, yeah, so um, I'm zooming in from, uh, uh, from Ghana country in Adelaide. And of course I um, pay my respects to, um, to the Ghana people and those past and present. Um, and yeah, so yeah, obviously, as Caroline said, I use a vast range of uh, materials um, to make art of um, with an output so far, including performance, videos, paintings, uh, costumes, knittings, assemblages, photography, embroidery, artist multiples, installations, and a parade float. Um, I'm just reading a little bit and then I'm going to place um, have some images so um, yes you don't need to see me looking at a piece of paper for this this section which I've written um, in addition to costumes worn in performance works that are mostly made of cloth and not not dissimilar to cloth worn on our bodies as clothing cloth is present in in quite a lot of my work so I'd like to share images of some cloth based work from throughout my practice um, discuss their materiality and how I utilise language inherent in the material to create new cultural artefacts. So I'm just going to go to my imagery. And here it comes. Right, okay. So, um, yeah, I... I thought um, I'd start off with uh, with some painting, and even though uh, it wouldn't necessarily be considered a, a work, a, a cloth work, um, it, you know, it, it, it of course is. So many of the the greatest and most beloved paintings created throughout history have cloth as their base material. So recognizing this enables textiles to comfortably clap back at painting and say, a some textiles are great art too and should be valued accordingly. And B, a painting is a textile. It's appliqued with paint. 
So um, perhaps um, German artist Rosemary Trockel pointed at this most fabu at this most fabulously with her um, strict builder or knitted pictures from 1985, which were large scale machine made knitted geometric works that are displayed in the same way paintings generally are. So um, they're rectangular objects mounted on slightly protruding and slightly protruding out of the walls. So the works draw attention that a canvas for painting upon uh, uh, for painting upon is itself a machine made weave. They are presented as paintings, particularly minimalist paintings that amongst other things subvert masculine minimalism aesthetics and a male dominated painting culture. So um, this is um, one of my works. These are um, sort of earlier works for me. This is a series is from, um, uh, it began in 1997 and they're called Emotional Landscapes. And um, yeah, I, I drew out the Emotional Landscapes in particular because they, they do have a, a, like a textile appearance. It could almost be like they're, um, they're, they're cross-stitched. Um, or that, or even the the gradients of the X marks have a, a look a likeness to stretched material. Um, so yeah, the, uh, and of course when you see the um, and this is with a lot of paintings, if you see them really close up, um, you can see the 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 fabric as well as part of the aesthetic. So it's it's always present, uh, unless it's of course it's a it's a really um, you know in, in pasto heavy heavily painted work you usually always see a bit of the canvas so um yeah so that's a, a i think an important point so um these also have a, a sort of a labor intensity um which of course uh, a lot of um craft craft uh not craft um yeah it, i guess considered considered craft art so that that um repetitive crafting that we have in, in knitting embroidery um you know, um, quilting, etc. Um, so yeah, they're little tiny X's and um, they're just repeated from top to bottom. So in a sense, they're a, sort of like a, a, a love letter. So it's sort of rows and rows of kisses. So it's a, it's a painting as a way for me to I guess, transmit kisses. And um, and also um, they they do have also obviously a look likeness to uh, to uh, art from my country and from other other countries and um yeah and they're called emotional landscapes because i can i i um yeah they're done outside of country so they're just me imagining and i there are 19 episodes in the series which and the last one i did was 2009 so a, a, a while ago um and yeah i i i they're in episodes and episodes is kind of a a, a good term to um to to put the series into episodes which obviously we know usually from television but um but also an episode is like a it can be a traumatic um you know it can have an emotional episode so um so the the good thing with with these works is they all have an end point so i can kind of you know in that repetitive um state i suppose i can kind of really con concentrate and reflect and and then it gets to the end so yeah it's a nice way to package up um, uh, moments that are um, not always, um, you know, joyful. Um, this was the final one I did. I'm sorry the image isn't isn't great, um, but it, this is uh, uh, whiteout. So uh, on a, a huge canvas, it's like two metres tall and uh, I think about 1,800, 1,700 across. And, yeah, again, it's rows and rows and rows with those little bottles and um, with the the whiteout, it's it's been a nice kind of metaphor for you know for whitewashing and for um, kind of I guess in a sense even reclaiming this sort of um, uh, uh, Australian landscape painting in a sense in terms of uh, of culture. Okay, so um, move, I guess from the episodic works that are sometimes a bit more traumatic. Um, they, these, this series of work um, started as, as knittings, and I think there's about 15 of them. Um, they're, they're simply called sunsets, and they're uh, knitted with usually three, sometimes four different um, uh, shades of, of, of yarn. They're usually synthetic material so that, although this particular one I think has some natural fibers in it as well um, and they are 
uh, dragged or modelled from um, Andy Warhol's um, uh, season for a uh, series of sunsets. And so, um, yeah, it's 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 certainly not to Andy Warhol, but also I I, I happen to have the privilege of living um, on Gunner Country and right on the beach. So I have the most spectacular sunsets quite often, and it's own it's it's unique performance every day. So um, yeah, in a sense, these works are kind of tied to that as well. Um, this is another version of the um, of the knitted sunsets, and then. Um, after that, I thought, well, why not do emotional sunsets? So these are, you know, painted versions, again, with those kind of colour variations. And it's kind of, it was also kind of a nice thing that the the bleed that you kind of get with colours, with the, the knitting and all the bits where you tie off to, to keep going for that sort of middle section, um, yeah, it creates kind of a colour blur interference and, um, yeah, delightfully some of the paintings kind of did that as well. So although I did sort of swap brushes from time to time, um, these these works as well as the second emotional landscape that I, I, I showed you, they, they, um, uh, they're, on, they're oil paint and so they're um, etched into the paint while they're still wet. So kind of like... Um, uh, uh, you call it i can't think of the word okay so um debossed i mean yeah so instead of embossed it's like a, a, a debossing of of the paint the second one i think there's 16 or so of these as well okay and um these uh works here are, are knittings um they're called pink poles um, they uh, are literally um, long cylinders. So, so they're, they're, each work is a continuous knit. So they're done on um, uh, as round, round knitting needles, which you sometimes do, you know, um, arms for jumpers and you know, uh, leggings and, or, or, or whatever. But, um, yeah, so it's a, it's a continuous um, line. So you just... Yeah, so I can't really say I'll be with you soon. I'll just finish this row because essentially the entire thing is one row. Um, and um, yeah, and there's ten of those of them all up. I think these are, these particular ones are in the um, Art Bank collection. I think in Melbourne. Um, and yeah, they in terms of what they represent, um, they in a sense they're they're they do have a role like to burial poles, which are um, not only in my culture, but in Tiwi culture and several, um, several indigenous um, uh, populations in, in the Pacific. Um, and sometimes they're, um, uh, they'll contain bodies or, or, or objects that were um, uh, of, the, of the deceased and, um, and they're to sort of memorialise the person. And so these are, in a, some of the designs um, uh, are not, yeah, these designs are not overly dissimilar to some of some designs, including the colour, um, but I've literally kind of amped it right up and, you know, by using these sort of pink needles. So they're both amp and camp and subversive in that way. Um, and they also have a transparency, a hollowness to them as well, because um, I'm also a descendant of stolen generations as well. So they're kind of really loaded um, uh, in terms of this kind of mourning, if you like. And um, yeah, and I kind of, instead of um, uh, shying away from these kind of disturbing and problematic things, I kind of you know, it's it's like kind of staring the monster in the in the face and laughing at it really hard. So it's uh, so it is playful. It is deliberately with a twist, um, but at the same time, it's not disrespectful. It, it's care, and yeah, it's it it does disrupt things slightly, but hopefully in a very joyful way. And they're obviously not, you know, um, burial hop, um, you know, artifacts of the past. So they're a, they're a, a reimagining. And also, like they, uh, the good thing about these works too is they roll up because they're knitting, and then I can kind of restuff them at the other end or, or kind of rehang them. Actually, these don't require stuffing at all; just some little hang hanging points at the top. 
Um, this is a, I've done many, many of these kind of dillies and it's a, um, a you know, the word even is a, it's kind of a, a, a um, an English word to describe these these um, these objects, which again in many Aboriginal um, cultures, but I think I'm going to you know um, uh, own that and utilise this. And they 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 use you know you, you often used to to transport um, you know um, food and weapons, but they're also you know contain magic or medicine. Um, so they carry messages and carry messages. So uh, mine always carry messages. So there's always text on them. And this one is sort of having an interplay conversation with a with a Vernon R. Key work, which says, um, not an animal or a plant, which is, you know, um, uh, he's referencing the the um, uh, ways in which Aboriginal people were um, categorised um, and also, I guess, kind of accounted for. And I've kind of um, thought, well, as a queer reading, well, I'll just... Why not? I I can be a plant or an animal if I want to. So you know it's 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 playful. Um, it's not you know oppositional at, by any means to to um, Vernon's work because I love uh, Vernon's work and I really adore Vernon as well. Um, yeah. Um, and here's another one. And, and this one is I guess it's a it's a Richard Bell reference too because it's that um, Aboriginal art. It's a white thing. Or um, and this is like it's it's a grey thing. But the grey thing could also be about the name calling of this object. So they kind of have, um, I guess, kind of um, mobility and they have kind of personality to me. Um, and this one has sort of um, applique buttons on it, which um, I don't think any of my other ones do. I have other works that, that do, but not the dillies. Um, this is just two dillies um, having their picture taken. Um, uh, a, away I think on the um, edge of a mountain top um, and this kind of um, yeah it's two of the works from 27 of them that are all linked together that spell out the song tomorrow um, which is a song from Annie um, and it you know was about you know um, picking yourself up from hardship and all, all of those those sort of tropes and um, yeah so um, Yes, I guess in a way this kind of almost could be sort of like a blue beyond blue kind of reference, and this idea that they're on this kind of um, on this mountain that they could just sort of blow off the off the the mountain and be lost forever. Or you know they're vulnerable there, um, but also kind of strong. They have a weightedness too about them, I suppose. So I, I realised that with those song lyrics, I could um, uh, divide them up into um, uh, smaller stanzas too, and they kind of have make a different sense to what the the song um, is. Oh, and these are uh, two works uh, on display in Berlin. Um, this is, uh, it's called Heya uh, and, and Heya Ao. So Heya is the, is the one standing with its, um, perhaps it, its limbs or its arms flailing out. And, and Heya Ao um, is, the, is the one with its um, uh, uh, crutch on the on the uh, Kasala stool, and um, yeah, they're um, they're also continuous knittings in a way. So 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 the 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 main limb uh, or the main trunk of the works um, have uh, are made with the, the same way as the um, as the pink poles, and then I've I've once I've got to a certain point about sort of three metres along or nearly that, I, I split it with eight knitting needles and then I keep going into two lots. So, so it's those little sock double end needles, which I, I, I kind of call my, my Britney Spears. They're like little spear shaped ones. Um, these um, two works also were on, on display at um, Australian Tapestry Workshop with a, um, in Body and Cloth in 2017. So, um, yeah, there, there is since a uh, uh, there's a, a third one called um, Schultz Mantle Madonna Mimi, and there's a there's a, a fourth one on the way. Um, this is another kind of subversive, playful, almost um, uh, uh, yeah, it's like a, a costume. So the, this is is called Modesty Set One. Um, I was commissioned by Flinders University Art Museum to. Um, for a, a new exhibition to to um, create 
um, new work. And um, yeah, and, and they sub subsequently uh, bought all three sets as well. So, um, you know, they are, again, you can see that the, the, uh, the object in the bottom um, kind of has, has that dilliness, but it's also made like a, a almost like a G, an a underpants really, you could just sort of slip it on. And, and, and same with the kind of bra-like object at the top, which, all, which reference paintings, but they also, um, yeah, they're, you know, clearly they represent costume as well. And they're also kind of genderless because it's the idea that anybody could wear them. Um, and the genderless um, thing is is also kind of important uh, part of my kind of cultural uh, uh, creators as well. So 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 in the um, in Jawan culture we have um, uh, Mimi's and they're kind of credited as as um, as creating the the, the big um, rock paintings and and um, you know and teaching us to um, to cook you know to the, the two the two best things um, food and art. Um, yeah, so, so there, there's three different colour versions of these as well, and they're made of uh, the knitting as well as, um, uh, I guess, sewing or coil sewing, I think it's called. I'm not entirely sure. And the, the top one has um, uh, jute holding it um, in place, so I kind of I, I weave around or sew around the jute. And um, yeah, the, the little bands on it are, are knitting with um, uh, yeah, sort of a jute binding, which I've also sewn over the top. Okay, so uh, this uh, is probably what I'm most well known for these days. These are um, uh, called postcards. And this is, was the very first one I made in 2009. Um, and yeah, so they reference Australian place names that were literally dragged from um, North America and um, you know and or, and Europe um, to become place names in Australia. And um, the places also have a they could all almost be people or drag queens or sister girls. So it's you know so Bella Vista or Tree Brook could be you know nice queen names. And um, they're made of of glow mesh. I'll just skip to the mesh material so they're made of glow mesh which um uh and and foam mesh which is kind of like the sort of reproduction versions um and yeah the glow mesh bags are from 1958 onwards and they're an australian invention in sydney and um yeah so i've literally uh, went hunting and gathering um through op shops and and bought probably nearly a thousand glow mesh bags by now and then i i um i uh, fillet them and cut them up um, or, or the, you know, the bands off the edge. And then I unpick with a, uh, with either a needle or a pin and a magnifying glass to unpack, unpick the latches on the back and join them back together again to make huge seamless surface structures. So if I go um, back, um, so the dimensions of this one, is like uh, 1.6, 1.7 meters across. So, so they're really big works and they take a very long time to make. Um, some of them a year. Um, uh, yeah, so I kind of, I do different projects at, at once to, you know, um, yeah, to keep things moving. So they sometimes take a long time to be delivered. Um, they also um, reference, importantly, the breastplates that um, Governor Macquarie and other um, uh, uh, future governors gave um, or awarded to Aboriginal um, people around the, the you know, the entire country to, to try and, um, uh, I guess it had a, a, a double edge to it. So it was, uh, yeah, so it was, it, was to, it was to create a kind of a a, a link to, to individuals, uh, individual Aboriginal people and, you know, by default, communities around the country in, in a, at a certain time. And some communities and individuals embraced them, some did not, sometimes they got the wrong person. So, you know, it's, it's, it's messy and complicated. Um, and you might've seen some of them about this. They're these small, um, usually kind of a gold or bronze with, you know, like to King Billy and, you know, these, these kind of names that they kind of made up for, for people as well. So in a sense, these are kind of queen plates. So they also sort of subvert that and they're like glamorous regalia, like jewelry even, or even, um, or even um, clothing, you wear it as like superhero capes. 
it's not one, um, this is one of those little tiny ones that, um, but it is the smallest work. It's, um, yeah, so I needed a pin and a magnifying and, and glasses and no unnatural light because the, the, the back is, is very silvery and tiny. So it, it refracts, ref, refracts light and it's um really bad for the eyes and yeah just you know it's yeah anyway i know a lot of you would know what time consuming and dedication means um and this is the 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 most recent completed one this is um on this was on display at hugo michelle um gallery in adelaide and this is called postcard darling and sausage there's another close-up and um nearly done there's a display of most of them um bar um you know the newest one this is at the art gallery of south australia at the vestibule so as, soon as, as you walk through the front door it's yeah in in your in your face so that's the security counter and then um the yeah i showed three different bodies of work at, at um during the the Menklitsch's exhibition and uh, yeah, so these were included in them. There was um, the newest one for this one was to Mole Creek from Adventure Bay, and the others were on display at at Carriage Works in the National. So some of you may have seen them there. Um, yeah, and then on either of the the side walls, I had um, uh, of this this part of the gallery, I had um, uh, new nomenclature works, and there's some of the nomenclature works there. This is a, the last slide. Uh, I've probably ripped through that very quickly. I'm, I'm not quite sure. Um, and this is from the um, recent display at Perth Tucker Regional Gallery in, in Townsville. Um, and currently, and I, I don't have an image to show you, but um, uh, yeah, there's a lot more of them now um, on display in Harndorf. So they're also quite large. Um, they're made of, uh, okay, so it's, they're, they're, new or recycled Holland blinds. So there's really, really big kind of um, white blinds that you can kind of roll up um, and to keep the, the sun out or for privacy or whatever. And, um, and so I get two of them and I um, uh, paint a graphic of uh, place names, um, which are essentially the same uh, place. So I should, probably should go back a bit. I don't know if I can. Yes, I can do that. So, yeah, so, so they're called nomenclatures. So, so, so a nomenclature is like to name something. So um, all around the country, um, we, there was, uh, uh, there were, there were more, there were names for, for places that were, um, were either German um, names or named after a German person, or, or even in some cases, a, uh, a German person who was Australian. And uh, towards the end of the First World War, um, all of the, uh, well, certainly most of the G German place names were changed um, and replaced with, with non-German names. Um, and in South Australia, we had the Nomenclature Act, which is of um, 1917. And then we had a Nomenclature Act for 1935 to reinstate some of those names. So that's why, you know, Handorf exists um, and it's, it's back to Handorf. So it was, so I've taken both names and I've, uh, painted them separately and then cut, um, the, uh, the blind with the painting on it into one into really long strips and one into short strips. And then I've literally weaved them back together. So, you know, the very simple weave, and then it kind of, kind of creates this abstraction and I'm very okay that, it's not always very obvious what the words are because that the naming of country and history of places, it's all very complex anyway. So, um, so it's like, you it just, it's, you know, to sort of go with that abstraction and, um, the good poetic thing about the weave in this instance is that, the, um, weaving and it's probably in most of your wheelhouse anyway, is that, um, you know, the, it's the weft and the warp and, and you know, it's held in place in like a suspension. So to kind of suspend these place names or the naming of place in the same location together, it's kind of like an, an act of, of, I guess, of, I'm not entirely sure if it's even reconciliation, but it's certainly um, about acknowledging 
multiple versions of history at the same time and honouring them and celebrating them. In fact, that's why I use so much colour in my work to, 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 to celebrate them at the same time. Um, and what's sewn over the, to- over the top of that is, uh, is the names of the Aboriginal um, groups that, or, or nations um, that who's, who it's recognised that that country uh, who, who, who's the you know the, the owners of that country? But of course, in some cases, I, I discovered that that some um, in some of the works that there there isn't anyone who identifies of, uh, of that nation anymore because they're either either being eradicated or um, uh, yeah, I guess you know the, the, there still could be traces in other other community or other nations because of course for you know thousands of years there was some migration and there was of course you know um relationships that occurred so you know there would still likely be people um who have ancestry um but you know it's yet to, you know certainly even with our I think our current technology or maybe access to technology it's it's you know kind of probably quite hard to work that out but you know maybe one day that's will be possible okay so i'm going to Stop sharing. Oh, and I'm back. How's that? Are we all? all I think we're all back on, Troy. Thanks so much. That was just so interesting. And, and, you know, you've been very generous in sharing insights into your practices. And, wow, what a a versatile practice, both in terms of uh, what you're producing but also what you're doing to make it. It's just incredible. And, and all the all the factors that you reference, uh, I found it you know um, very powerful, and your bodies of work are very powerful and wonderfully oh. coloured. So so well done for you, and thanks so much for sharing that with us. Now I'm I'm waiting for some questions to come in from our audience. Please feel free to ask some questions. I might start off in a sec, just to let you know we've got a range of people for, that have joined us tonight. Uh, we've got Eric from Mingen in Brisbane. We've got um, people from Boonwurrung in St Kilda. We have Gurringai Country Northern Beaches. Wow. We have Somerset UK. We have um, Nam in Melbourne, the Gadigal Country, Heidelberg, Wurundjeri, Woi, Warong Country. I hope I'm pronouncing those okay. And um, thanks for sharing that with us. It's always good to know we've got a really good group of people here. Yeah. Now, here we have a, a first question. Troy, what originally drew you to using textiles and have you had any training in weaving or knitting? Mm. Oh, that that's good. I can answer that one. I started with textiles. Um, well, you know, I guess, you know, um, yeah, I guess, you know, but both, um, both from art school, I started with textiles, but also when I was like a, like a wee person. Um, yeah, my, um, both of my grandmothers, no, one of my grandmothers, um, my mother and both my grandfathers taught me knitting and, um, and not, not just stick knit, uh, knitting with needles, but also the, is it tomboy knitting or, or um, yeah, yeah, the ones where you have the little, um, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, that kind of knitting. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so I, I, I think from... Uh, as a as a little person, I, I I kind of um loved that idea that you could grow something, you know, and see something happen. I, I think that that was a magical thing to me that happened in my childhood, and it's a very I, it's a very uh, good thing to do if you're shy too, because I kind of then could just be on myself by myself, and you know I had something to do, and um yeah, and kind of that magic of creating something so it happened very very early but also when I went to art school I, I started making um uh yeah em- embroidered work and um and weaving and knitting um I didn't show any pictures tonight because I'm still um I, I don't think the photos are that great and I, I want to do something with them one day anyway I think some of the work still exists um but yeah so yeah that's... When you see those images, your pink poles and and the other ones um, called oh, the, the ones that are in Berlin, yeah, you know you can see how how much you have grown objects to to show. It's fantastic. Yeah, because they really now, can do anything, 
you know, and, and you can, you know, as I said, you can transport them and, and you know, and for sort of art making possibilities, certainly, um, you know, they'll just, you know, I, I know some places want a great lead up, but if, it means you can do pop ups and all sorts of things with them. I mean, textiles are great like that. So, you know, who needs the baggage of these great big frames and all of that when you can roll it up and put it in your suitcase with you? And very inspirational for, for lots of people around the country to be able to do things from what you've been showing. Uh, Troy, you mentioned, I think, somebody, uh, the question is, you mentioned a female artist who also created knitted, knitted paintings and they were wondering what the name was. Oh, I've, I've got books. I can show you. It's, it's um, Rosemary Trockle. And I'll, I'll just um, uh, show you what, maybe one image. There you go. Oh. Of her. Rosemary Trockle. <laughs> Not even doing that now. Rosemary Trockle, that's the spelling. Great. Did, did you want to show him any of your works out of the book, Troy? I, I will. I'll just find a um, one that's really. Yeah, so a lot of her work is machine. Um, uh, look, she, she, she's, a, she's a, con a conceptual artist, probably, you know, a bit like me, really. I think I'm, you know, conceptual as well as amongst other amongst a whole lot of other, other brands you might want to give me. I, I'll, I'll give myself that one. And, um, yeah, but, um, yeah, so so the knitting work is part of her practice, but she, she um you know, she she has a lot more work that's considered greater than the knitting, but personally I, I prefer the knitting. Um, this isn't quite the earliest ones I described, but even even this here, it's, it's actually more of an outfit shape and you can see she's used that kind of those logos, um, you know, really gorgeous work. And you could just imagine in the, in the mid eighties when, it, when you have, um, you know, all of that kind of hard edge abstraction work and then she's doing playing top notch with all the boys but you know with these knittings presented like paintings i mean it's it's revolutionary really you know i think yeah well thanks for sharing that that's great I, I, many of us have been impacted by covid in all sorts of different ways i'd be interested how you have found it both personally and professionally and if you're happy to share any of that yeah. with uh, us look to, to be um i guess you know a lot of you probably uh, you know, I guess it will affect all of us, obviously, in different ways. Um, uh, I, I think, look, I already have a lot of empathy anyway, probably a bit, a bit too much because I kind of introvert things and it's probably a good way, why, uh, uh, good that I do these long haul projects because that way I can kind of, you know, keep it contained. But, um, but yeah, I think I've got even more empathy now for people and I found that, that um, uh, other people seem to have more empathy as well. Or it went the other way. So, um, but for me, in terms of my practice, I um, I just had a you know that big big kind of gig announced, and it was you know this sort of life changing moment, and, it, and of course you know COVID just kept on coming, so I didn't quite get as much audience as what was was planned. But at the same time, that I I was able to work um, at at home and stay in the same place, and in in some ways um, because I had. You know, so all those early nomenclatures were made um, in, in those conditions. And, yeah, so I luckily I had a stash of, um, of second-hand Holland blinds that I could repurpose. And there was a Bunnings not that far. So when we were allowed to do a shop, I was trying not to hang out at Bunnings because people were looking for loopholes to go out. <laughs> but I, I, I did go and stock up. And I just ordered paint online and, you know, and, um, yeah, and just worked. And so in some ways it was it was nice to work without distractions. Um, and I found for me, I didn't get too lonely with it because, you know, I, 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 I'm sort of partly in that zone anyway. Um, and yeah, I think, you know, the, the, it was scary and I've had kind of odd dreams ever since it all began and it hasn't quite settled yet for me, but I'm just learned to go with it. You know, and, you know, if I'm, because I don't have another job, I'm a full-time artist, I just, as long as I keep it moving, if I happen to wake up at some weird hour and I've inspired, I just go with it. I mean, you know, what's the big deal? Yeah, so it's, it's give me a, a, maybe a, a diff, slightly different perspective on the world and, and on self-care and all of that stuff. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Thanks for sharing all that with us. I think it gives um, everyone listening quite some heart and certainly go with it. Is, is is a really good idea. Troy, what did it mean to you to be awarded with the inaugural 
Guildhouse Fellowship. I mean, that sounds like a wonderful, a wonderful thing to receive. And I'd, I'd love to hear your thoughts on that and what it enabled you to do. Ab- absolutely. So look, it, it um uh, look the the best thing about it really um you know a, it was money. It wasn't a lot of money. I mean, the fellowships are a lot more money, but it was the um uh, uh, the having that kind of spotlight and having the support around you so so because it was just me then i got to work with the art gallery so this, you know for my particular project and, and form really close relationships with people that are um you know and, and curators and great professionals we have in our industry that you know um and yeah so it was like here's sort of all of my vulnerabilities everything and you know you just get to work close with somebody and and yeah so it's probably transformed me personally in that way um but also um i think yeah professionally it's just having that that spotlight on you for a bit and of course i had that just before at the national so you know i think the national was was a whammy and then this is a double whammy and um yeah i used to feel a bit um apprehensive about even applying for these things i thought no 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 someone else needs it there's always someone you know worse off than me or somebody else deserves it and i just thought no you you know in your 40s just you need to just do it and um yeah and even having that success that success was interesting um as well because then i realized well, maybe before it was a bit like oh well that you know i'd almost sort of project that that not tell people about it but have this sort of oh well these that's got enough opportunity where's opportunities for these people and sometimes you need more than one because um you know uh it's to sustain a career if you're doing it full time is really hard, um, and and maybe for you know for it depends on what kind of work you do, um, and and you know and to be in one one city and certainly a smaller city like Adelaide, it, it's not enough. You have to be able to 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 travel and have visibility in other places. Um, you know, it's um we live in a sort of centralised art places. I, I know you know Melbourne's fantastic for for work as is you know in, in Sydney and Brisbane, but uh, he's a bit smaller again. So yeah, we we have yeah yeah. So so it, it was absolutely um uh, uh seems overused, but it was transformative indeed. It's it's uh, and just hearing from your voice, it, yeah, it, I can we can imagine that. A few other questions, Troy, but before I do, just love some lovely comments. That was really interesting, delightful. You know, you like your work so much. Um, wonderful to see all those works. Thank you, Troy. So wonderful to see the connection of painting and textile practice in your work. This is from Nat Manang, Noongar Country in Albany, WA. Thank you. So some, some lovely comments coming through, Troy. Now, a couple, uh, some other questions I mentioned. Have you ever ha- had the chance to share your work with or show it to the Jawin people and, and country? Has that been an opportunity for you? Um, uh, it has, um, but in the context of um, uh, there's been uh, times in my, um, not so much, yeah, partly my curating career, but also um, at certain times I've been, you know, chair of organisations and, um, things, uh, yeah. So I, I've, I've, so as part of that, we've kind of got to meet with people representing other organisations and particularly other Aboriginal organisations around the country. So, um, so, so what was represented in those places were, were, um, uh, uh, you know, Jawan land councils and Jawan cultural authorities and all of that sort of stuff. So I kind of got to share my work in, in that kind of way. And, and, um, and I haven't been to country. Um, and I, I know for some people that would be like, oh, well, you should, you just got to go do it. And I, and I will. Um, but, you know, in many ways, um, sort of in the past, I kind of haven't been ready. It's been too traumatic. And, you know, I, and people don't know what people have been through. And, uh, and I, you know, this is with everybody, really. We don't wear T-shirts with our full biography on, our, on them. Um, and... Yeah, so I, I think for a lot of people, I've been kind of resisting other people's fantasy to do what people expect that I should do, and just um, just beating to my own drum in a way. And I think you know, you kind of sometimes you have to allow people to do that. And um, yeah, and and yeah, and also for some people to just 
land in a place and all of that, you know, that it's not necessarily the ideal fantasy. But you know, I'm 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 ready. I just, you know, when I when the time's right and it'll I'm sure it'll be soon. But I also kind of like that as well that I haven't because it gives me this like the emotional landscapes have this power then that, you know, um yeah. So so we have a message, a message and thanks, Troy. Sorry, uh, have you finished on that? Or yeah. can I, uh, like the, the next message is from Hannah from Ukraine. So we're thinking of you all, Hannah mm -hmm. and everyone else in Ukraine. She says, I like your conceptual thinking and how you express it in your creation and in practice. Wish you, Troy, a lot of inspiration and thanks for a great conversation. So, oh. yeah, Hannah, thank you very much for that message. And, and, and I'm sure that uh, for Troy, that's a really lovely message to receive. Yeah. And then, oh, and scary. and I know, I know. And then from Paula, thanks so much, Troy. So wonderful to learn more about your practice. Love your use of text and stitch as pattern. It's almost like movement and rhythm. So some really, really super messages. Now, one other question, Troy: Have you collaborated with other textile artists? Uh, not so much collaboration. Um, I although I uh, with the uh, nomenclature works so the first ones that from 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 lockdown I, I was I was going to and I was always going to you know I wanted to get a machine to 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 do the the lettering up the center because I needed a tough machine to and um yeah I found someone who is an artist in South Australia who has a you know long one of those long neck ones they're like super expensive and um and so yeah and yeah so I didn't see the point of buying one for an off you know, for a, a one-off project. And, um, yeah, so I um, in, engaged them as a technician to to go over the, the, the text, which I'd already drawn onto the thing, uh, onto, the, onto the object. So, and, and probably in some sort of community things too, but, but there, um, yeah, I, I suppose like with my kind of curating too, I see the, the community stuff as being community. And then occasionally there's an opportunity for something that, that I would consider curating, at least for me. And for me, it's about, you know, researching and having the different artists and artefacts kind of um, being like chapters in a book to tell a, a story, you know. So, yeah, it's um, so, so not so much collaboration in, in that kind of way. Um, yeah. And I wonder if you could um, elaborate on this quote. Knitting, embroidery, sewing and other textile-based practices are associated with care, community, activism and love, the socio-political powers of materials. I think that's a really, a really, really interesting quote. Do you want to talk on that? But in, in a way, um, it, it's kind of um, uh, it's acknowledging that, um, you know, even say knitting, for example, um, and, and, and some sewing was, you know, was, um, I guess, you know, particularly with, say, um, uh, uh, women stitching messages and using that, you know, even, a, a, you know, in war times to be able to discreetly um, get messages across through, through by, by knitting and embroidering on, onto clothing and, and to, you know, onto fabric. Um, and, and so that has a, you know, politicalness and it's sort of secret, but also the, the idea of care is, is kind of, I guess, pretty, is current for me because it's, it is about, the devotion to something, the, the caring about something. And not to say that if I do a work that's quick or with a different kind of material that isn't at all fabric based, um, that there's no care in it, but it, it also reads as care, the material. And, and for some people, you know, we all catch different kind of meanings from things, but that, you know, some of us will pick up um, from you know, an object that looks like it's had so much work put into it. So there's a caringness, but also um, uh, there's sort of a care for me then to to not get into live political debates or, or putting my opinion out there and adding to the noise. Because um, and I'm, I'm, people could say whatever they want to say, that's perfectly fine. But um, I, I sometimes try and avoid that myself. Um, uh, so instead, I can kind of put that care of thought into something that's long processed done so that way I can really not be super responsive to something and, and, and get it completely wrong, which often, you know, people do because when we get more information, we realize, Oh, whoops, I shouldn't have said that. Um, yeah. By, by making things into work with the care, you consider things a lot more 
And so, you know, they're sort of subtle in their politics, I think, but they still, you know, make a, a hopefully a contribution anyway. And I think the images, particularly that one on the vestibule, when you've got the two sort of types of projects on the one, that was hugely powerful to see that. And yeah. it must have been in real life, it must have even been even more powerful and how exciting for you. Awesome, particularly to walk into this sort of, um, you know, this, um, you know, the, the state galleries are, you know, these, um, well, not all of them, but certainly the, you know, um, uh, yes, some of them, they're these, you know, old sandstone colonial structures and, you know, beautiful, absolutely. But to have that as you walk in, it just, you know, to, in a sense, um, yeah, have a, I don't even know if it's decolonising, but it's having a, a, a different marker there of, of, of something completely not of the colonial um, uh yeah, a stamp was yeah also added to its kind of power too, and 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 that really that was the idea of the of the the gallery. I, I must absolutely say I didn't kind of thank you very much, everybody, and um yeah I um I hope to see you on maybe online or something if you want to have a chat. I, I I'm I am on Insta. Um, I tend to be sort of image focused, but really I'm also like to share share the love. So if if you if you are on Insta, please um you know um follow me or message me or, or whatever you like and I'll, I'll follow you back and um yeah keep, keep in, in touch it's good to as a community so thank you